Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Some superb news struck for Husker softball early this morning as Jordy Ball has officially announced her transfer to the Huskers. In her first two seasons of college softball at Oklahoma, she helped the Sooners clinch back-to-back -back national titles while being named a first-team All-American and Big 12 Pitcher of the Year in both her freshman and sophomore seasons. In the Women's College World Series last week, Ball was named Most Outstanding Player after recording a 7-0 record in the tournament with an ERA of .18. When the news broke earlier today, head coach Ron Ravel stated, Jordy is an amazing young woman, teammate, and athlete who we know is an incredible addition to our team both on and off the field. The Husker volleyball team also came back home after spending some time down in Brazil. This morning, head coach John Cook was at the podium where he reflected on how meaningful these international trips can be to this team. Listen in. Well, first of all, we got basically an extra month of training. Okay, so that right there is a huge thing. Second thing is, we now know our captains. We now know what they need to work on. And uh, I just think our level of confidence is higher because we've played more. And this is a young group. So it was, it's a very young group. So just having that game experience will, I think, you know, I think we've a couple of our international trips. I and mean, we won national championships after those trips. So these trips are definitely worth, worth it. We'll hear more from Coach Cook's press conference in hour two of the show. Postseason honors were awarded to the NU track and field team today as sophomore thrower Axelina Johannesson was named the USTF Triple CA Women's Field Athlete of the Year and head coach Justin St. Clair was named both the Midwest region's men's and women's coach of the year on Thursday. Congratulations to both of them on their honors. And finally, round one of the U.S. Open went live today, and some historic rounds have already been reported. Currently tied for first is Ricky Fowler and Xander Shoffley, who both shot eight under par at 62. Following those two are Clark and Harmon, still playing their first round. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is a full two hours of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers radio network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Three eligible to the near side. Back to throw is Morgan. Stepping up, gets hit, dropped. Oh, he got drilled at the 18-yard line. Ty Robinson's second sack of the year. I think he took his shoes off with that hit. Simon gets the shotgun snap. Husker send a corner blitz. Simon steps, throws. Pass intercepted. Picked off Go, by baby. Miles Farmer. Go, to baby. the 35 to the 30. Rook tied down to the 27-yard line. Miles Farmer's fourth career high end team. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, we have speculated for several days that Jordy Ball would become a corn Oscar. It became official earlier this morning. Cole mentioned it in the ticker just moments ago. And all of a sudden, Husker softball becomes a big time player on the national scene. We welcome you to our Thursday edition of Sports Island here on the Huskers Radio Network. Hope you had a great day today. Warming up, it always warms up around the College World Series. It's going to be 90s plus tomorrow for those first two games. The opener is Oral Roberts and TCU at 1 o'clock, and then the nightcap is Florida and Virginia. A lot of fans already in town. We will see some of them drift down here to Lincoln on those off days. Those fans are looking for something to do. A lot of times they come down and check out the campus here in Lincoln. But Jordy Ball uh, earlier this morning made the announcement, and it was, you know, I think we kind of felt like this was pretty good shape on Monday, but until you hear it, Jessica, you, you kind of Hold your breath just a little bit. And it's official, officially official, because you, then you have to go through all the channels of getting uh, compliance and signing in. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a process. It's not just, hey, right. I'm coming. And so, uh, yeah, I felt like it was, it was coming, and she alluded to that. And I know she was on campus yesterday and made the rounds and, and met a bunch of people, talked to a bunch of folks, and did a little photo shoot out at Bowling Stadium. And so... It's exciting, you know, the, I, I know the ticket office is just being bombarded, which is awesome. It's so cool to see, you know, the fan support. And, you know, I just, I want to remind people, I mean, this is not, uh, this is a team that's 
ready for that it's kind of in place for a good pitcher to come in and, and take it to the next level right I mean so yeah. much of it is you can make it all about the pitcher the pitcher the pitcher and Jordy Ball is unbelievable and is you know a game changer for a, would be a game changer for every program in America but you can't just do it with pitching alone and this team has a stacked lineup ready for her to walk into and a lot of players that she's really familiar with have played either against or with for a long time and so I know it's it's an exciting day for those players as well to have this this uh, pitcher come in and, and believe in them too because you know I don't think Jordy would have gone somewhere where there uh, she wants to play at home but she also knows that there's a chance that this team could also do something special and so I think it, it means a lot to these players that are already on the roster that she believes in them as well well back to back NCAA appearances I mean this is yeah. a team that's been in the Big tournament Ten the last champion. two years yeah. Big Ten champs a year ago they won the tournament last year so they, they've been part of that 64 team field for the last two years I think she probably would like to bat a little bit. Oh, I think she would. She absolutely would. You know, and Nebraska's okay with doing that. Courtney batted quite a bit this year, even though she threw all those innings. So I think she will get a chance to bat. No, I was told she wanted to hit at OU, but OU just has. I mean, they have people sitting on their bench that yeah. would be. They got eight All Americans. You know, on that I team, mean, it's so. just. But I, I think that had to be absolutely because she's just such a competitor yeah. and she wants to do anything and everything to help her team win. And I think that was a huge part of it too, is is seeing what Courtney Wallace was able to do. We did not hear from her today, and it may be a while. Before we hear from her, I think she probably would like to lay low a little bit. I mean, it's not, she's not that far removed from winning the title a week ago. It's, I'm sure, been a whirlwind for her. So I don't know that we'll hear much from her for a week or two. Yeah, and, and I did. I, I spoke to someone that knew her well at OU that, I mean, it was a tough year. I, I don't know if people understand the kind of pressure that she was under and the, um, you know, just the amount of the expectations that they had to deal with at OU and her as a pitcher and being having so much on her shoulders and then having just a really, gosh, I mean, well, the long run, it just ended. It just ended. So, and then she's getting all these media requests. I think, yeah, she wants to take a step back. She's made her decision. She put it out there. I think she wants to breathe a minute. Get back home, get acclimated, and before she she does many interviews and but we will get her. We'll get her on this program, and we'll be able to hear from her um, soon enough. But you know, respect the fact that she wants a little bit of time to breathe. And I, I mean, I just I know it's a, a huge kind of sigh of relief. I think probably the weight of the world has been lifted off her shoulders at this point, and uh, so giving her a little bit of time to get settled in, and and we'll get her. We'll hear from her soon enough. Yeah, and hey, you got to let just let her have a moment to catch her breath, let everybody talk to her and her family and that type of thing. But, yeah, we will get her as soon as she's willing and able to, to start talking. So, busy. You're right. The ticket office, I guess, had 800 uh, orders taken today, over 800 today for season tickets for Oscar softball next year, even though the schedule probably won't you come out You can get on the waiting list. Months. That's what you can do is get on the waiting right. list for season tickets. Yeah, over 800 on the waiting list this afternoon for tickets for that. And so it, it, it'll be a huge interest when she takes the field for the first time now. Softball plays a lot of games in the fall, too. They'll play five or six games in September and early October. So you'll get those don't count toward your record in the spring, but you'll get a chance to go out there and watch her play some yeah, in the fall as well. Uh, volleyball back. And John Cook met with the media today. We're going to play some of that for you coming up in the second hour. The newsy announcement was the name, name of the captains. Apparently they voted for this while they were in Brazil. One I'm not surprised at at all. The other one kind of caught my attention, and that's Merritt Beeson is, is one of the captains. Lexi Rodriguez is the other one. That's a slam dunk to me. But Merritt, and I've not met her, you talked to Merritt, uh, that's pretty impressive to come here in January and be named a captain in June. Which Lexi was a captain last year, and she's just adored by this team. And Merritt was a captain last year as a sophomore at Florida. And so, yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I asked her about because I think – she was already in that role a little bit, even as a sophomore at Florida. And, um, you know, I don't think it was anything she did. She didn't have to try. I think it's just she's one of those natural-born leaders and was already in that role and felt comfortable in that role. And I'm really not surprised. And I, we'd been hearing how great of a leader she'd been for this team. Apparently. And I think they, um, they follow her lead. And I think she's just um, – it's – if you meet her and you talk to her, you understand why it's easy to, to, to trust her and like her and want to follow her. I'm trying to think of some recent teams that maybe somebody grabbed the mantle of that leadership role that quick 
Darian Daniels, a couple years ago in football, was a transfer from Oklahoma State, and he, in his first year... Wasn't he a grad transfer, a, though? Yeah, he was a grad transfer, a little older than Merritt, yeah. who's, you know, a junior, junior. Same age as a lot of these players on this team. That's pretty impressive. Speaks highly of her. John Cook said it was really... He goes, because he didn't vote. He said the team votes. He goes, I'd have voted for... He said they, six of them kind of got down to the six finalists, and he goes, I'd have voted for any of the six. They were really impressive in their presentations, but those are the two that made the cut. Yeah, I think there's just with this, how this team is built and those juniors, that junior class that we've talked a lot about, there's several uh, players that could have gotten that nod. Um, I think they've had three in the past before, right? Or has it always been two? I think they've had three at some times, yeah. Yeah, so just maybe, I don't know how he got, came to the decision to have two. Um, but, yeah, I think anybody probably in that junior class, I wouldn't have been surprised. Was Jess Shelley a captain right away? Yeah, no, not, not her first year. She was last she, year. Yeah, I think it's her second year. Yeah, and I, did the men even have a captain? Because Sam Griesel might have been, if they, but I don't know if they voted. I don't know that Coach Hoiberg has captains per se. Yeah, I don't. I don't I'm remember. Not sure. Do you? I don't okay. remember hearing about one. So that's pretty impressive. But we'll hear more from Coach Cook coming up in the second hour. They had a recruiting window that opened. He said he was up at midnight last night, 12:01. He goes, "I'm making phone calls because that was our first time to connect." with 25 class people. So these coaches never sleep. I think Amy Williams is out of town doing some recruiting at a camp right now. So these coaches just don't ever get to rest. This is a really big weekend for Husker football. There are, if you're into the Stars game, there are a handful of four stars that are going to be here the next couple of days uh, on campus. The music's pumping again yep. out in the concourse today. Uh, so this is a pretty big weekend. Huskers have picked up a couple of commits so far in June. I know they would like to add a few more before the month is over. So this will be a big couple of days for the staff. They're almost to their vacation time. They've got about 10 more days, and then the staff's going to unplug. And boy, do they need it. They have gone hard, Jessica, since they came to town, some of them in, in early December. December. Yeah, they, it's just been nonstop and trying to get acclimated. And then you think about some of them have families are trying to move here and Oh, what school do they need to go to? Right. And I mean, just all the things that Where's go, my doctor gonna be go and... along with moving, you know, in itself, and then just trying to get a, a culture and a team in place. And I mean, they really have it in the end. The camp, the camp deal is really, really important to the staff. So they, all of them are working it. It's all hands on deck. You can tell how much they all believe in it. That's something from the the top down with Coach Rule. He's been saying from the start. That the camps are going to be really important to to him in this program, and they all believe in it. They're all working it. You're seeing the the tweets and the posts from recruits all over. And I also like too that it's like, hey, it's not an invite. If you want to come, come on, come be a part of it. If you want to come be in this camp, let's go. You you absolutely can. And so, and then the fact that they had a fullback specialty camp, and uh, you know, just I think they Love are that. are being very. Um, it's uh, it's really important to them, and I think they're 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 not just a half half rearing it they are going all in yep. on it who ended up winning the golf yesterday i matt rural tweeted late well last... chubba was on that team which we talked uh, about it, yeah we said now they he took a shot at polar bear so maybe they beat nash in the in the finals i'm trying to pull up the tweet today but uh they were, had trophies even for the golf yesterday but you're right chubba was in the midst of the guys that were uh had a had a trophy so uh, oh brian buscini was in there brian buscini, brian buscini. And Chuba, and I'm not sure who the, I'm not sure who the guy on the right is. There's four of them in there. But then the tweet was something about uh, the polar bear got beat by a pencil pusher. Is that what that is? I see. I don't. I can't read his, emoji. His emoji. I can't read his emoji game. I when I saw that, because you know how you, you hear about like, pencil pushing, like, okay, it was somebody not giving the right scores on that uh -huh. scorecard. That's what I took that as. So he called Nash out. No, that Nash got beat by. Oh, so maybe Nash thinks he got squeezed by these guys. I don't know. Well, have, I mean, that's... There might be a story there. We, we might have to dig into that a little bit. It was bit so because... funny. Coach Satterfield, I passed him in the concourse yesterday, and he was carrying that trophy. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, we're going out to Agar to play some golf, and this is the winner gets this. I go, that's pretty cool. So It's, it's, um, it's so genius to me how, look... I, I talked to a lot of these guys last week, and a lot of them talked before, even whether we're recording or not. Some of them said it in the interviews, how hard it is right now. I mean, it's a grind. It's, it's a grind in January and February, and then you start playing spring ball a little bit. You get to play a little bit of football again. This is a grind. This is a hard time. And so the fact they're sprinkling in a little bit of fun, they're doing a lot of volunteer service, uh, volunteer um, activities out in the community, community service. And 
you know, but but still going back to that competitiveness and instilling that competi competing something at stake. Yes, that's why they had a trophy. Yes, and so it's you're you're getting a, a little bit of an escape from the grind, but then it it's going back to hey, you're still competing to try to win something, still instilling that it's everything that they're doing there. It's there's a little bit of that fun competition that's added to it. Love it. Andy says it's pencil whipping. Did you have you? I'm sure you've played with somebody that. You'll finish a hole and you go, okay, what'd you get? A bogey. And you're like, wait a minute, I counted like eight shots. Yeah, you're, right. You're yes. telling me you got a five on oh, that, that hole? that absolutely happens in golf. Cole, are you a pencil oh, whipper? Oh, he's laughing, so no. I I'm taking that as a I'm yes. Honest. Yeah. We've all played with those guys that they're hitting in all the place and you yeah. go, what'd you get? Because I'll go, I got a six. And they go, I have bogeyed it. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you were knocking it all over the place. You four putted. That's, uh. what I, that's what I take that pencil as, is that somebody was. I have to ask Pushing Nash. Pushing the fence a little bit. We'll see Nash next time. I'm going to have to ask him what happened on the golf course. I do, I do think Nash plays. You mentioned that last night. I did, wasn't sure, but I do now remember seeing some pictures of Nash on the golf course. All right, uh, here's what we have on the program tonight. Malachi Coleman is on campus working out with the Huskers, the uh, very talented wide receiver from Lincoln East. Um, he was at pretty much every spring practice, even though he didn't finish up his high school until May. He wasn't able to be out there with the guys, but he was sitting there taking mental reps at a lot of the practice sessions. Interesting fella. There's a lot, there's a lot to Malachi. He's a very kind of deep individual with a lot of things going on outside of football that are good, good things about him. He wants to utilize his platform that he's been given to do good and um, you know, his expectations, I, I think for, that's another thing to remember when we're, we're talking about Jordy Ball and like the expectations that come along with that. I think probably being the number one recruit in the state, a lot of people expecting things. I think he's, he's trying, and you'll hear him talk about it, just managing that and, you know, just doing what he can, but understanding that, hey, I'm a freshman and I got to do what I can to get out there. But just because I'm the number one recruit in the state doesn't mean I'm going to come in and be a thousand yard receiver. Right. Type of thing. Right. So he's coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Hour number two, we'll play some clips from John Cook's press conference today, recapping their Brazil trip, which was a two-week trip. They got back yesterday, and they're right back in the gym. They're back into conditioning and getting ready for the upcoming season. He also had some thoughts about Jordan Larson joining his staff in September. And Lori Endicott, who's uh, one of the members of the 2023 Hall of Fame class, she was a terrific volleyball player from 85 to 88. Started as an outside hitter, converted to center, played for Coach Pettit. She's going to join us uh, in hour number two of the program as well. And we want you to be a part of this as well. 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at Woodhouse. Dot com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back with Jessica's chat with Malachi. That's coming up next. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. University of Nebraska leadership has launched a $3 billion fundraising campaign to support education access for Nebraska students. The Only in Nebraska campaign the largest in university history, will focus on creating scholarships to make education more affordable, attracting more Nebraska students, and keeping young people in the state after graduation. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. Hey, congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free call to 811. You want to borrow my phone, buddy? Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the F&BO Husker Visa debit card to the list. 
Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, T-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBL, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Take your adventures to new heights when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Lincoln. Explore our current lineup to find a luxury SUV that exceeds your expectations. Receive 1.9% APR for 36 months on all 2023 Lincoln models. The Lincoln Aviator, Lincoln Corsair, Lincoln Nautilus, and Lincoln Navigator provide a sense of elevated peace to every moment of your drive. Experience the power of sanctuary in-store or online at woodhouselincoln.com. With a credit, expire 7323. See dealer for details. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars now to the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning High V Chinese today. Some restrictions may apply. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker Athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan, townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone, so it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that, which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See shelter agent Mike Shepard or Craig Kerr in Lincoln or agent Jeff Martinez in Omaha today. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealers, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. It's a Thursday night. It's our last live show of the week. We'll have a best of for you tomorrow night. That's kind of our norm during the, the summer months to play you some great interviews. We'll have Cole give you the rundown for what's on tomorrow night's program here on Sports Sunday. Malachi Coleman, really highly talked about young guy, highly recruited young man. The last time we saw Malachi play a football game was in that All-Star game in Hawaii where he had a couple of big touchdown catches. I know the staff is excited for Malachi and what he could do and help this football team maybe as early as this fall for the Big Red. Jessica had a chance to catch up with the talented freshman. Here with freshman wide receiver Malachi Coleman. Well, how does this feel, this feeling getting in this uniform now officially? Um, it's definitely been a dream for a long time, and now that we're here, it's kind of surreal, but uh, let's keep our head down, keep working. You know, it's been such, like you said, a long process. So, how does it feel? I, I can imagine to going through the recruiting process is a lot of pressure, a lot of eyeballs on you, but to finally officially be here and to kind of start that process of being a college student athlete, how is that feeling? Um, you know, you keep your busy, you know, keep a busy schedule, and I like that because it keeps you out of trouble, especially. 
Um, but I also like having a set schedule because it gets me things that I need to do every single day. They give me meetings, they give me school, they give me workouts and all that type of stuff. And, you know, um, coming from a person that didn't have a lot of structure in the beginning, I like having structure, and that's what college is all about. So, it's awesome. You were here a lot throughout the spring, even though you weren't here enrolled. And Coach Rule had opened up the doors for recruits, whoever wanted to come. You were here a lot. Why was that important for you to be here throughout the spring? Uh, definitely, it was um, probably just mental reps. I wanted to see what it looked like. I wanted to see how the coaches coached, the players responded to it, and I wanted to see how it fit. What did you learn throughout just kind of what you were able to take in? Um, I'm definitely going to pick it up mentally if I want to play this year. How, how do you go about learning a, a playbook? Do you enjoy that kind of part of it? Um, it was definitely a little overwhelming when I first sat in front of me, but I'd say taking it piece by piece, and I'm starting to pick it up, so that's very exciting to me. You just, again, throughout your recruiting process, you had to get to know, get to know a whole new coaching staff. So what did you like about this new staff, Coach Rule and, and his guys, that you felt like they'd be good leaders for you? Um, the fact that I can trust every single one of them. I can go to any of them with any of my problems. Or if I need anything, they're going to help me. Just one phone call away or just walk into their office. It doesn't matter who it is. What's it been like getting to know Garrett McGuire? Most detailed person you ever meet. Really? Yeah, I think he's going to be head coach one day. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what is it that, I mean, besides being detail-oriented, that you're excited about playing for him? Garrett. Um, he's just one of those people that you want to make proud. Like he puts in just as much work into the game as you do, and you don't find that in very many places. So he's a very special person. Yeah, I love that. Um, what about you personally? What what things are you attacking this summer to be able to maybe come in and make an impact immediately as a freshman? Um, just making sure that I'm in the best physical condition I could be. I stay on top of school and just, you know, whatever happens in the fall happens. I'm not going to try and force anything. I'm still a freshman, so... I'm not going to put these high expectations on myself. I'm just going to play the game. If my team needs me, then I'm going to be there for them. Good perspective. Are you uh, doing some extra work with the quarterbacks? I know a lot, of, a lot of times they get in there and do some extra work. Are you trying to get some chemistry going with those quarterbacks? Oh uh, Yeah, we, we, have, we definitely still have a lot of throwing sessions and OTAs and all that stuff with them. And you know, we just had a freshman receiver meeting, and Jeff just sat in there with us just because he wanted to absorb the game even more. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was pretty cool. So Yeah, for sure. You know, one thing about this wide receiver group is there's a whole lot of different kinds of wide receivers. What do you think that does for an offense that, I mean, you got guys like you, but then you got Billy Kemp. I mean, just a whole different kinds of types of guys that can go make plays. What, what do you think that does for an offense? It makes us limitless because you can have anybody line up anywhere in this offense, and I love it. Awesome. Well, you just recently uh, had a big, I guess, uh, you were on a Kelly Clarkson show, on the Kelly Clarkson show. What was that like, uh, that process, whole, all going and filming that and being there and being a part of that? Uh, it honestly didn't hit me until like, we were backstage ready to go on. Like, Kelly Clarkson wanted me on her show. And I thought, you know, like, just giving my family these opportunities and to and come enjoy the stuff like this and to also get my message out in the world is kind of what I came here for. What has the response been from being on that show? Uh, within like the first 12 hours, we had almost $10,000 raised on our foundation. It was amazing. What does that mean to you that people saw your story and related to it and wanted to help you raise, those, raise that money? Uh, they look at me and they see me as a good example and they want to help me. And that's something that means a lot more to me than just being a good football player. Yeah, I think people are familiar with their story, but why, why is that so important to utilize your platform and be seen beyond just being a football player? Because I was a foster kid once, I wasn't allowed to play any sports, and I want these kids to have every opportunity that any other kid can have. What about the response from Husker Nation, being a Nebraska kid, being from the state, and, you know, it's just such a highly touted recruit, and then when you decided to come here and the response from Husker Nation, what's that been like taking all that in? Uh, I honestly just had to disappear for like a couple of weeks because <laughs> it was insane. I had to shut my phone off and everything because I go out anywhere and people would be like, Malachi, Malachi, you signed this for me, I take pictures with me, but... Um, I got used to it a little bit more, and uh, I love having a connection for that. Yes, how excited are you um, now that you're here and you can get the ball rolling on this thing? I'm just looking forward to this process. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That was my first time ever interviewing him. It was super impressive, obviously. A uh, couple of notables. So before we started recruiting or recording, I was asking him about going on the Kelly Clarkson show. And I don't know if you've watched that show, but she sings a lot of time with she her does. guests. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, did you sing? Were you going to sing with her? He's like, no, she did not want me to sing. I would not do that. But um, he said it was a really cool experience and just being able to go through all that. I mean, how awesome is that for a, a senior in high school at, at the time to be able to go and do that and for people to respond the way that they did? I mean, what a, what a neat experience. But I thought a couple things that I was really um, that really stood out to me in that interview. Gary McGuire, he's like, he's going to be a head coach one day. 
just the little interaction that he's had with him. And then the second was that uh, Jeff, Jeff Sims, when he was going through freshman wide receiver meetings, that he wanted to come be a part of it and, and get really to cool. know those freshman wide receivers. And so um, obviously Jeff's doing all the things that he needs to do to be able to develop that kind of chemistry with, with all the guys. Because I think there's some freshman wide receivers that could actually help. I do, the too. The offense. I agree. So the backstory with Malachi, a lot, of, a lot of our audience knows it, but he was in the foster care system. His foster parents then ended up adopting him, and so he's created this foundation to raise money to help foster kids and help that process along, and that's why Kelly Clarkson had heard his story, put him on as a guest, and, and Kelly, who has a group that then donated $15,000 that day to his his foundation. I just think that's that is a really grown up thing to do for a guy that's maybe 18. I doubt he's 19 yet. Maybe he is, but young man. I mean, he heard him say how much how it's important to him, and he wants to be able to provide opportunities that you know he was fortunate enough to get, but that not everybody does get. And you know, a 18 year old kid to have that kind of conviction to want to help kids and make it easier and better for some of these kids in these situations just huge and you know yeah he could be worried about hey i'm trying to make you know make an impact on a football right. team right now right. i'm trying to go play and, and he could be wanting to raise nil money for himself absolutely and this is not his priority I, it's just i i've never seen anything like it out of a freshman like that and not to say that there aren't freshmen that Would don't do that. have their you know yeah. head on their shoulders and, and want to do that but but the way that He's been because he's got a huge platform, and the way that he's using that platform already is just really, really impressive. You know, uh, he was really close with Coach Joseph, and and when the Mickey era ended, I think Malachi looked around a little bit. I think he took a visit to Colorado, you know, and it, but he didn't get sucked up into the prime time deal. I think he took a look at it and said, "No, nah, I think I'm gonna stay. I'm good at Nebraska," and I don't blame him for doing that. These kids, it's. It's a big decision to make. It's where you're going to spend the next four to five years. So I don't, I don't begrudge him at all for going to take that look. But I, I think there's a maturity level about Malachi, and I'm rooting for him. I'm really into that he has an impact. And when you're a five-star recruit, a number one recruit in the state, I think you get fed a lot of you do a lot of things when you go to these recruiting visits. And I, I think that's what we've come to to know and understand. And and really appreciate and what these recruits and these players have liked and why you haven't seen a big influx into the portal is because I think that this how genuine this staff is they're real they're not going to feed you lines and and tell you what you want to hear they're going to be honest and real with you and I think that's really refreshing to some of these recruits that are so used to going and hearing the spiel of what you want to hear everywhere but the realness of this staff I think is what has set them apart for with people like Malachi that does have things outside of just playing football and wanting to be a good football player that's important to him. It's a wonderful story. And again, like I said, I'm pulling from Lincoln East has been good to the Oscars. We had Sam Griesel from Lincoln East last year on the basketball team. And now you hope Malachi can, and it, and it may take time. I mean, I, I never want to put too many expectations on a true freshman. They have to do a lot of learning, a lot of learning of playbooks, of being how physical the game is. They're also trying to deal with becoming a college student. There's a lot going on for any freshman in any sport, but uh, I'm pulling from Malachi. Good story. Good to hear from him there. Our Sports Sunday Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime they've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Cole has reopened those phone lines for us, 402 413-2400. Give us a call. Fire off a text. We'll interact next. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right. Get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just twenty-two dollars now through the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning Hy-Vee Chinese today. Some restrictions may apply. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. 
First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Bring even more action to your drive when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Buick GMC. Right now, you can lease the 2023 Buick Encore GX preferred for $299 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. Explore our current inventory in store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. With approved credit, $9.99 down payment, first payment, a $2.99 dock fee, do it signing. Must have a current GMC or Buick lease and garaging address. Offer expires 63023. See dealer for details. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer resting in CY2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hey, Husker fans, you've got an opportunity to be a part of the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium in 2023 by purchasing a Through These Gates mini plan. The three-game ticket package has been on sale for a couple of weeks. It's $100. Bucks. It, you get you a ticket to both non-conference games, which are Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. And then, this is the beauty of it, you get to pick the third game from the five conference home games, which are Michigan, Northwestern, Purdue, Maryland, and Iowa. You get to pick. I don't think any of those have been blocked out yet. I think they're getting close 
on the Michigan game, to be honest with you. But um, 100 bucks north, south end zone, where the seats are located. You can do it yourself, huskers.com slash tickets. You can visit the ticket office, or you can call during normal business hours, 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Again, it's called the Through These Gates Mini Plan. All right, 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Uh, somebody said that YouTube has the full Malachi appearance with his parents on the Kelly Clarkson show. People want to go watch the segment. And he was on. I think he might have been on two segments. I think, I think they took a break in the middle of it. So it, it, was, it was a long appearance. It was really cool. I actually really like the Kelly Clarkson, sh Clarkson show. And I don't like talk shows, but I think she does a really good job. And she mixes it up and has people like Malachi Coleman on there to tell his story. And um, so, and then she sings a lot, too. Yeah. And, but... Um, she was an American Idol. Yeah, she, winner or she was a winner. Yeah, she was a winner. Was she? She's the first ever winner. And but yeah, um, you can watch the full thing. I just he was running around and getting to the next, so I didn't want to get into yeah. like all of that there. But right. yeah, I mean th he goes into it more so in depth um, on that appearance, so you can definitely look. At, I, I recommend looking it up. It was a really great interview. Very cool, Colin Cowherd. Uh, everybody knows Colin. He used to have a show on ESPN now. I think he's on FS1, does an afternoon show. He had a bit today, and I want your take on this, Jessica. He, the, we, we mentioned it briefly last night that the SEC followed the Big Ten by putting out their 2024-2025 schedules because next year they're adding Oklahoma and Texas like the Big Ten is adding UCLA and USC. My goodness, some of them are hard. If you want to go see a hard schedule, go look up Florida's schedule for next year. It is ridiculously bad but Oklahoma's is pretty challenging as well and Colin thinks they could just kind of drift into oblivion and he compared it to the way Nebraska has kind of drifted off the map of big time programs once the Huskers move to the Big Ten Conference but if I'm Oklahoma and I'm their fan base I am a little apprehensive it is a daunting looking schedule they've got yeah and I think I mean he has not admitted this ever and i and ou fans don't want to admit admit this but i think that's a big reason why lincoln riley left wanted to get out before they went to the sec i don't think he felt they were ready i don't think they were ready i mean i told you i talked to one of the the guys on the staff when nebraska went back and played at oklahoma the first time and that was my first year i'd just been there just a few months and they were asking me about the Nebraska's walk-on program because they didn't feel like they had enough players just even for practice, right? Because when you're going through a schedule like the SEC where it's it's just a different animal than the Big 12, and there are some, some games when you're playing in the Big 12 that it's just not as physical, um, the just the daunting task of playing in the SEC. You have to be strategic about how you practice, right? And so I don't think they felt like they were ready even personnel-wise how they and and i haven't obviously i don't know haven't been there in a couple of years maybe they've changed a little bit of that but it didn't look like they were ready last year no how they played last year they were really good through the nebraska game and then the wheels just fell off for them from late september to the end of the year they lost their bowl game to florida state i think they ended up going six and seven ended up so here's their schedule for 2024 at least this is their sec schedule home games alabama comes to norman south carolina who has, there's some connections to the Oklahoma program with South Carolina. Tennessee, there's some big time connections with Heibel. Oh, and Heibel's gonna wanna go back there yep. and put it on OU. Yep, and so then they play Texas. That's technically an Oklahoma home game. It'll be in Dallas, obviously, for the Red River rivalry. Their road games, Auburn, who's been scuffling, so that may not be quite as daunting, but still that's not an easy place to play. LSU oh. is a top 10 program. Missouri. Which they'll probably play at night, which is oh. almost impossible to beat LSU it's at hard night. Because yeah. remember, I told you last year, it's a day game, night game. When I was making picks, see, you're giving away your secrets. Night games write are that, impossible write that to down. win. Is Cole <laughs> going to play picks with us? You think he Cole better? Will do it? He better get ready. Uh, the last two road games for Oklahoma next year in the conference at Ole Miss. So Lane Kiffin got to go play him, and then at Missouri. That's a little old Big Eight rivalry for them. So that's their eight league games for Oklahoma next year. That's Whew, that is not easy at all. Yeah, and I mean, again, I, I think even just 
they had a lot of guys that stayed. It went, and you could say, oh, it was his first year, but but they had still a lot of talent that was on that roster a year ago. And the way that, um, boy, they just they looked awful at times, just absolutely abysmal. And so I don't know. We'll see. I know they got a big time quarterback recruit that maybe if Dylan Gabriel there at times Dylan Gabriel maybe you could have replaced him but they didn't really have anybody he did get hurt a couple times and uh, things really fell apart maybe now they've got a little a better quarterback to back him up if that's the case a true freshman coming in you never know true freshman we'll see but I don't know I I think um it's that's a whole you're talking about a whole different animal going and playing in the SEC than it is the Big 12 I, and they had a handle on the Big 12 and I think they again did. that's part of why Lincoln Riley was a little upset because you you take care of business every year in the Big 12 and you do what they've been doing. They had a basically they had a spot in the college football playoff every single year. Pretty much. And now Lincoln's in the Big 10. So you kind of wonder what he thinks of that. But, you know, and Colin has for whatever reason, he's not a fan of Nebraska. Take shots in Nebraska. And this one was kind of out of the blue to say it gets clicks. Right. He does that on purpose. If Nebraska is that irrelevant, why does Nebraska keep being brought up by all these national writers and broadcasters? Because it blows up on social media. And that's that's why it's why. Why do you think Big Tech, uh, the money, the TV money? Nebraska is a big part of that, too, because people watch. The eyeballs are there with all the sports. I mean, there's a reason why the ratings, their fans watch, they tune in, and they're the best fan base in, in America. And every media outlet in the country knows that and recognizes that, and they play off of that, which Colin Cowherd has done that. He has, and, yeah, he knows where to go punch some buttons that will give him some, some ears or clicks, as you mentioned. You think Cole's going to be any good at these picks? Maybe. We'll see. Don't follow Andrew's playbook. Yeah. The revenge tour did not accomplish its uh, its uh, want to last year from Andrew. <laughs> Andrew will probably want to submit picks even though he's not working with us anymore. Yes. Moving, moving yes, forward. Yes, he will. Folks, buckle up. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. But if you're not driving, we do want to hear from you. 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. We're back to wrap up our one next. Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB Play of the Year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get High Chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just $22 during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. That's right, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just $22 now to the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd pleasing, award winning High V Chinese today. Summer stretches may apply. And a 36, Bazelak trying to set up a screen, gets hit and sacked. Brought down Ty Robinson, brings him down a sack for Ty. Hey, Esker fans, tune in tomorrow for another encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In the 6 o'clock hour, we'll listen back to interviews with Merritt Beeson and Peyton Robb. In the 7 o'clock hour, we'll go back to conversations with Trev Alberts, Till Steinforth, and Kristen Coggin. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, final couple of minutes on our hour one of our Thursday show. Art in Los Angeles wants to know about how is the 12-team playoff going to work. Art, I don't know that they have all the details ironed out yet, and I don't know that they're going to just hand out automatic bids. They're certainly going to have a committee that puts it together, but... As, as fluid as some of these conferences are right now, my guess is there will be some automatic bids given to the winner of the SEC and the Big Ten and maybe the ACC and Big 12, but I, I don't know. And the Pac-12 seems like it's still very much up in the air, so I don't think they've boxed themselves in, unless I've missed it. I don't think they've boxed themselves in on how they're going to fill that tournament. I also don't think it's fair sometimes just to automatically give the Pac-12... A, a bid. Especially the way that it's it's going. I don't know if it's like, oh, let's... And, and especially maybe this year you could say that, but like in a couple of years, we don't know where the Pac-12 is going to be. Right. So I, I wouldn't want them to just say, okay, every, and the, the power five is going to go away at this probably point. Probably going to be power four, probably. And so I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe they'll have a, I don't even think you could even say this is going to be the formula because you never know when like a, say a, which Houston's not going to the big 12, but like one of those teams Houston wasn't a big... Cincinnati was great a couple years Cincinnati, ago. Cincinnati, yeah. yeah. Some of these other teams that outside of the Power Five conferences that maybe you want to make sure that you have those spots for. But also maybe some years Memphis has been a team that has been that. Yeah. Maybe, but maybe there's some years that there aren't one of those teams that you feel like they can go compete. Right. We just don't know with how things are going. It's just such a ever-changing landscape. You don't know if maybe in two years if they will be able to have those kinds of teams that can go, come compete with, say, the top five of the Big Ten and the top five of, of the, the SEC. To so do they, five teams get in? Right. You know, like, I don't know. We'll see. I, I think it's hard that one league could get five. Four, I could see. Five would be a, maybe yeah, a stretch. Yeah, I maybe was being a little bit over-exaggerating. But, I think four, but like four, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Aren't they, what they are going to do, they have decided the top four seeds will get a bye. We'll not have to play the opening weekend. So five will play 12, six will play 11, seven will play 10, eight will play nine. And those games they have decided will be on campuses. That's that awesome. Love. Yes. I love that thing to see somebody from the South may have to go play a Northern school or, or uh, so that, that they have decided that. And then the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals will work their way through a bowl system where they'll go to some of those bull sites. So they have decided that. I don't know that they've decided on automatic bids. I also love, too, that it still gives a lot to play for, whether that be even getting into the playoff or having home field advantage. Yeah. Even if you lose maybe one or two at the beginning of the year, you still have a lot to play for in this deal. Because if you're top eight, you get a home, you get a home game. Or five through eight gets home games. So I think that'll be so much fun. I, I love it. I love that part of it uh, that they're going to do. Fast hour. When we come back, John Cook met with the media today. They got back yesterday from Brazil. A lot of topics to cover. We'll hear from him, and we'll hear from Volleyball Hall of Famer Lori Endicott. That's coming up next hour. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. The only designated R1 Research University in Nebraska, UNL's innovations power economic growth, precision ag production, tech breakthroughs, and future leaders in Nebraska. 
With the highest graduation rates and highest median earnings for recent grads of any public university in Nebraska, UNL is doing big things for our state. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red.
Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Some superb news struck for Husker softball early this morning as Jordy Ball has officially announced her transfer to the Huskers. In her first two seasons of college softball at Oklahoma, she helped the Sooners clinch back-to-back -back national titles while being named a first-team All-American and Big 12 Pitcher of the Year in both her freshman and sophomore seasons. In the Women's College World Series last week, Ball was named the most outstanding player after recording a 7-0 record in the tournament with an ERA of .18. When the news broke earlier today, head coach Rhonda Ravel stated, Jordy is an amazing young woman, teammate, and athlete who we know is an incredible addition to our team both on and off the field. The Husker volleyball team also came back home after spending some time down in Brazil. This morning, head coach John Cook was at the podium where he reflected on how meaningful these international trips can be to his team. Listen in. Well, first of all, we got basically an extra month of training. Okay, so that right there is a huge thing. Second thing is we now know our captains. We now know what they need to work on. And uh, I just think our level of confidence is higher because we've played more. And this is a young group, so it was, it's a very young group. So just having that game experience, will, I think, you know, I think we've, couple of our international trips I and mean, we won national championships after those trips so these trips are definitely worth worth it we'll hear more from coach cook's press conference coming up next on sports nightly postseason honors were awarded to the nu track and field team today as sophomore thrower axelina johannesson was named the ustf triple c a women's field athlete of the year and head coach justin st Clair was named both the midwest region men's and women's coach of the year Congratulations to both of them on their honors. And finally, round one of the U.S. Open went live today, and some historic rounds have already been recorded. Currently tied for first is Ricky Fowler and Xander Shoffley, who both shot eight under par at 62. Brian Harmon sits in third at six under through 11, and both Clark and McElroy are tied at fourth at five under, with both golfers still on the course. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If, if so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for hour two of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers radio network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Three eligible to the near side. Back to throw is Morgan. Stepping up, gets hit, dropped. Oh, he got drilled at the 18-yard line. Ty Robinson's second sack of the year. I think he took his shoes off with that hit. Simon gets the shotgun snap. Huskers send a corner blitz. Simon steps, throws. Pass intercepted. Picked off Go, by Miles Farmer. Go, to baby. the 35 to the 30. Rook tied down to the 27-yard line. Miles Farmer's fourth career high end team. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, I pick uh, Russell Henley's not uh, not out of the gate very fast. He's a plus two through 12 holes. So my dark horse pick right now has some work to do at the U.S. Open. But as we've seen, you put up some big scores, so maybe he's got it. He's saving his big day for tomorrow. You pick Victor Hovland. He's at minus one, so not a bad day. And I I'll think... tell you who I didn't for a second think to pick was Ricky Fowler. <laughs> well, and my comment last night was uh, this tournament tends to kind of find somebody under the radar. And I w wouldn't you put Ricky under the radar? He hasn't won in yes. five or six years. He's never won a major. I no. mean, he's never won a tournament, I don't think. I think he's won some tournaments, but I don't think he's No, he's I don't think he's ever won. I'm going to look that up. But he, you know, he. I don't, last I'm year, pretty sure he's never won. Last year he was an alternate. He didn't even play in this. He didn't because he didn't, his name didn't get called. So he wasn't even in the field a year ago. And he shot 800 a day. Long way to go, though. Yeah, I mean, and obviously we've seen the capability of this course to be able to put up big, which probably, you mentioned in a break, it probably <laughs> kind of makes the course people a little mad. They're probably going to try to uh -huh. make things a little bit more difficult. They probably did not like to see a record-breaking day by no. two guys. Two guys. On day one. And Rory's still out there at minus five. He's got a shot to get to minus eight. His eight under on day, eight under is normally what you see on maybe day three. S yeah, Saturday. <laughs> You're watching. 
Uh, yeah. Somebody put a gif up and said, had a picture of a, of a pin inside of a bunker and goes, this is where the USGA will put the hole tomorrow, <laughs> inside uh, of a bunker. They're definitely so, going to try to make things more yeah. challenging tomorrow. Yeah, I think they will. All right, good to have you with us. Going to hear from John Cook. Had a press conference today. Just got back yesterday from their two-week trip to Brazil where they did go 5-0. and oh, And then they stayed and kind of had a... Well, for the lack of a better term, a boot camp type thing where they did extensive workouts as a team, some bonding things they did as a team. So let's just start with John's overall take on the trip down to Brazil. This team's already pretty tight. Uh, I, I just think, uh, first of all, being together for that long, you, you continue to build that. And we were in beautiful places, which help. There's no distractions. Uh, but just you know brazil plays a different style we actually played international rules so we didn't we played some matches where we played their rules which so our middles had to serve our middles had to play defense we couldn't you get you know one a couple games i went six subs that's all you get and it's only once one time in and one spot so i mean I, I i can remember the ref down ref coming over and he's like counting five you know six he's just because because he, he i think he thinks i'm gonna go through it and um, so that was, you know, really good because they've got to do everything and it prepares them for internationally. And, uh, but I think the main thing was, uh, you know, just, just being together and building relationships and they did a fantastic job of that. That's another thing that I hadn't thought about is you think about a lot of the players that come to Nebraska have aspirations to play internationally pro or yeah. internationally, but yeah. to have the experience in college of what that rule, what the rules look like, uh, all of that, that's also big. In addition to everything else that you get, the extra practices, the team bonding, all of that, but like for some of these players that that's what they want to do is maybe go play in Brazil right to have that kind of experience that's that's huge well we talked about it now one with a football team going and playing golf and doing those kind of bonding things yes these teams hang out a lot together but they may go their separate ways after practice I mean they may go to a just a buddy's house or a friend's house boyfriend's house whatever the case may be but in Brazil it's just your group it's just your group of 20 or whatever it was. Not 20. everybody speaks the language. Right, so you're, you're, yeah, you're surrounded by foreigners, and so you've got to hang together. So that's, that's a valuable part of it as well. They did go 5-0, and Jessica, but they did get pushed in a couple of sets by some of those U21 teams. Here's the coach talking about the value of playing at least close sets and then finding a way to win them. We, we won a lot of close games. I think we only lost one close deuce game, so we won all the other ones. So... Uh, I saw him step up. We, we were down, um, I think, 24-21 in a game, and uh, we made three unreal plays to tie it up and then won it. And that was, that was I mean, they were big-time plays. So it's good to see your team step up on the road like that and, and be able to win those. Uh, and then you just see it deflated. The, the Brazil teams can get deflated pretty quickly. They're very emotional. They're playing either on fire or they're kind of moping around and so we had a good learning lesson on for us we always want to try to be consistent in what we're doing whether we're ahead or behind so that, that was that was cool until we played the u19 team that that team impressed me the most because they played more like we do here in america emotionally and and, and mindset wise he told a story later that i didn't pull this clip but one of the teams they played the setter was 40. Wow. And John said, he goes, I remember her. He goes, we, he, John coached the U.S. team. He said it was 2007 or 2008, and they played Brazil, and this gal was on the team. He goes, I remember her. And he goes, we were watching their team play the night before we played him, and he goes, he grabbed his two setters, and he said, watch her. This gal is outstanding, one of the best setters in the world. And so he got a chance to talk to her, but he did talk about that. The big news yesterday for John and the program was Jordan Larson. The announcement that she's going to come back and be the third assistant in the fall. She won't be here until September, but then be with the team through the rest of the season and hopefully a deep run in the NCAA tournament. He was asked what does he expect out of Jordan and what kind of coach does he think she will be? Well, Jordan and I have been talking for the last couple of years. I mean, she was you know, going to be done after the last Olympics, but... They keep paying her a lot of money to play. So 
uh, and she feels good. I mean, we've talked a lot about that, and we've always been talking about that she wanted to coach here someday, and I told her I would do everything possible to make that happen. And so, you know, it's great when we got somebody that's playing at the highest level in the top league in the world, trying to play for the Olympics, and then she's in our gym. I mean, can you imagine? If, you know, like football team had Tom Brady out here, or some of those guys. So, or you know, um, Michael Jordan's hanging out with our basketball team and helping those guys. So it's just she has a different presence and a different feel and a different look, of how she sees things, and she she's a great communicator. She she's gonna be a great coach. And you think about how great of a coach Co Coach Cook is, you know, arguably the best in the sport, but the fact that Jordan Larson ha can teach things from where she just came from at an Olympic level yeah. and, and some of the things that she's been through and learned even outside of what she did at Nebraska. But she also has the understanding of what it means to wear the Husker uniform. But then she's gone on and, and gotten knowledge, gained knowledge and experience at a, on a whole different level that she can also instill in these players that not everybody in collegiate volleyball has. Like, right. arguably none has the kind of expertise and knowledge that Jordan Larson has that she can help instill in these players. And again, not every program has the kind of athletes that are coming here that are going to be able to do what? And, and go on and play. But there are some athletes every year that come into Nebraska volleyball that have a chance to play for Team USA, which right. is a, a big-time goal. And now you got somebody that can absolutely help you get there. Well, you know, he... So the last thing we've got from the coach is that they did decide while they were in Brazil who the captains would be. And he talked about how they had a, had a meeting one night, and he said, all right, raise your hand if you want to be a captain. He said everybody's hand went up. He goes, okay, you've got each three or four minutes to make a quick presentation. He goes, they were all great. So then the next night, he goes, all right, who still wants to be a captain? Six hands went up. So he said, all right, make your pitch, make your play. And he said at the end of that, he goes, I'd have voted for any of the six. He goes, they were that good. He goes, it's not my vote, it's the team's vote. And he said then uh, it came down, it was Lexi and Merritt Beeson who were going to be the captains of this team. And we talked in hour one about how impressive that is for Merritt just only being here six months to now be a captain. So he was asked, why does he think they won the vote? Why, what made them special and that their teammates voted for him? This is a great answer. Well, Le Lexi is a... a um kind of the world revolves around her on our team. She, even though she's quiet, she's not outspoken, but I don't know, she's kind of the center of everything going on. And Merritt just has great qualities. Uh, she wants to be a third grade teacher. So you know how to take care of people and they all come to her when something's not right. She's just like the team mom, I guess, in a way. Um, and she's built great relationships, even though she's been here a short time. So I think if you want to be a good, th good th third grade teacher, it's not about you. It's, it's about those kids. And for her, it's about her teammates. It makes so much sense. I, he said it better than I, I. I was trying to explain that earlier. If you meet her, there's just something different about that, about, you know, a lot of times we'll have athletes come in here and we've got the cameras and the microphones. And, I, you know, if they've never been in here and I've never met them, I'm just trying to carry on the conversation. But she was asking me about me and, like, just you could just tell that she has that care about right. people and is just so comfortable around anybody and everybody and can relate to all kinds of kinds and... It's just, yeah, he said it better than I did, but that's that's kind of what I was getting at is you meet her, you, you kind of get it a little bit of, of how she's able to connect and relate to people and in a way that not a lot of people have that kind of gift, I the, guess. The team mom is what he put for that. And I don't, uh, I didn't, some people might hear him say that the world revolves around Lexi maybe is a negative. No, that's not, that's not no, her at all. No, it's just that. I think, you, you're drawn yeah. to her. Maybe that's the better way. You're drawn to Lexi. And, and it's hard not to. Some of the things that she does, that she lays her body out on the floor. The things that she does, and she keeps plays alive that a lot of times would be a guarantee point right. with anybody else on the floor. They just they appreciate her in a way that 
they they all I think if you if you're around the team at all you can you understand that that's not a negative at all because right. that's just that's how she, and what the crazy thing is that's how it's been since she was a freshman you know I mean she's able already to do that, how about that immediately already a junior. I can't believe this class is juniors I feel old that was my first year that right. was one of my first because it was I sat down with the three Krause, uh, Lindsay Krause, Ali Batenhorst and Lexi, Lexi was, and Rodriguez. Kennedy was in that class to Kennedy Orr but she's not played much because of injuries. That, that she's been hurt. A uh, couple of text questions have come in. Do you know if there's a documentary in the works for Volleyball Day? That could be interesting. My guess is I, I think BTN's probably going to be all over that day. I think, I'm sure we'll have uh, all kinds of coverage. I on haven't that. heard who's televising that match. I'm pretty sure it's going to be BTN. Don't quote me on that. I don't. It hasn't been announced, but I get. I guarantee BTN's going to have cameras all over the place to document that whole thing. BTN and the other TV partners Maybe are going to ones. have sure have cameras embedded with the teams here like BTN does. Our crew does an excellent job. They will absolutely document. There will absolutely be coverage of this. And then once once things happen, you never know in the future, like, you know, maybe a year from now, two years, five years from now, you never know what kind of things could open up from this. But, yeah, there will definitely be all kinds of coverage and all the backstories, everything will be covered on this. Sad I'm going to miss it. Me too. Go drool us too. And you asked That's him about it at right. the end of his show, and you had to cut him off because he was talking about how he was upset that he wasn't going to be able That's, to be here for we're it. We're going to have that a lot. I'm he retweeted Jordy Ball today, too. How Did he? I mean, again, he's just, he's so, you know, he's got his thumb on the pulse of everything around here, and he's the, uh, he's all excited about the softball program. He reti retweeted Jordy Ball's announcement. It's, yeah. it's awesome to see. Uh, Carla said, Good evening, guys. Um, uh, I'm hesitant to ask what's Oklahoma's reaction to Jordy coming back to Nebraska. It's been pretty positive, hasn't it? I think on social, it's been pretty positive. Yeah. Uh, if you look at some of the quote tweets, and, and I put out a tweet about that too, it was really fascinating to see the different perspectives being that I, I came from Oklahoma, have been here, and the way that Nebraska fans were rooting and cheering for her and celebrating her success for OU while she no one really knew that that was going to be what happened and then now to see some of the OU fans saying hey understand your your stance and wanting to go back home and play for your home state school and being supportive in that regard I think maybe there might have been a little bit more negativity on maybe their local radio stations but on social media it's been pretty positive I think I, I don't know. I'll be fascinated to hear if the coaching staff was blindsided by it by OU. If like people I internally were a little bit more surprised by it, but and maybe people were questioning on you know how people call into the local radio show or whatever and and maybe be a little bit hateful. But I think for for the most part, the direct response from what you see on social media, I think, has been pretty positive. There you go, Carl. And understanding. Yeah, very good. All right, uh, we're going to continue some volleyball chatter because we've got the Hall of Famer, Lori Endicott, who is a part of the six-person class that will be enshrined this fall. Lori played from 85 to 88, so she played for Terry Pettit, and she's got a fascinating story about how she came, as, as she thought, an outside hitter, ended up turning into one of the great setters and the first Husker to play on the USA Olympic volleyball team. So Lori going to come up with us here in just a couple minutes. Folks, buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're back to talk to Lori next. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm sports media student Connor Clark with Campus News. More than $145 million in gross revenue has been generated by startup companies founded by alumni of UNL's Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program since the program began in 2010. With over 230 Angler Program alumni growing businesses across Nebraska, the Angler Program is making a big impact on the lives of students, alumni, and Nebraskans. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. For a delicious dinner on the go that will please the whole family, get high chai at High V. Right now, get a High V Chinese dinner for four, just $22 during the month of June. Get four one pint entrees, two pints of rice or lo mein, and eight egg rolls or crab rangoon. 
That's right. Get a Hy-Vee Chinese dinner for four, just $22. Now to the end of June. Dine in or carry out the crowd-pleasing, award-winning Hy-Vee Chinese today. Some restrictions may apply. FNBO is the great big small bank. And for more than 165 years, we've been with you where you are. A bank that's ready for all your needs, both big and small. Here to help you earn more, save more, so you can do more every step of the way. It's what you can expect from the great big small bank. FNBO, independent and family owned for six generations and ever so focused on you. Stop on by or visit us at fnbo.com, member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. That's my neighbor Joe. Hey Joe. Hey John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey Joe. Think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Husker fans, the 2023 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need your support celebrating the 100th year of Memorial Stadium. Purchase a special Husker football through these gates mini plan. For only $100, you will be at the Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech games, plus your choice of one home Big Ten game. Three games for only $100. Tickets available while supplies last. Purchase your through these gates mini plan today. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash tickets. Go Big Red. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It's sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. A real treat for us tonight to talk to another of the newest members of the Nebraska Hall of Athletics Hall of Fame, and that is volleyball great Lori Endicott, now Lori Endicott Vandersnick, who is joining us here tonight. Lori, congratulations. So well deserved. I, I hope you feel good about this. Thank you so much. I feel amazing. I, I mean, obviously, it's an incredible honor to be just classed with such an amazing group of people. Um, I know there's so many deserving Huskers out there, and to be inducted is just just an amazing honor. How did you find out? Who called you? Keith Zimmer called me. 
And were you, were you, did you drop the phone? Did you ask for verification this wasn't a prank call? <laughs> that was the call. Well, the interesting situation was that I had just started my volleyball clinics. And so I was getting just bombarded with phone calls. And I saw this number. It kept coming through. And I thought, well, maybe it's important. And so because I hadn't answered it yet because I was just – busy doing other things with the clinics. And so then finally I picked it up and it was Keith. And so he was announcing and just letting me know that I was being inducted. And I just apologize for not answering more quickly, but I, I was just being bombarded at that particular time. So obviously it was the highlight of my day. Oh, that's fantastic. Great story. Let's, let's go down memory road a little bit. Let, let's, okay. How did you end up at Nebraska? Let, take me through those days of making the decision where to attend college. Oh, gosh. Back, at, back in that day, recruiting was so different than it is today. Um, basically, high school seniors wait until they're seniors to be recruited, and they take their official visits. And now so many athletes will take unofficial visits. They'll go on their own to visit a variety of colleges and universities. And actually, it was a teammate of mine, Angie Milliken, that and Angie Goodgame, now that saw me, um, we had actually played kind of in this joint setting where we were training for USAV Nationals. She was with the Nebraska team. I was with the Missouri-Kansas team. And we ended up seeing each other. And she told the coaches at Nebraska, hey, you got to see this girl. I think she could really you know, be something for our program. And so I think she's the one that actually got the ball rolling on that. So they came and watched me play. And it was interesting because the first time Coach Pettit saw me, it was at a club tryout. And he was watching me warm up hit. And I think we may, each of us tells it a little bit differently, but I – Somewhere in the number of about 12, I hit 12 balls in a row in the net. And afterwards, um, he said that he was impressed with my play. And I thought, how on earth could he be impressed with my play? I just hit 12 in a row in the net. And he said that he wasn't recruiting me as a hitter. He was recruiting me as a setter. And he loved my composure and that I just kept working hard. I didn't get frustrated. I didn't blame anybody else on the team. I just kept working hard and kept my composure. And that's what he was most impressed with. You were busy with Lori Endicott, two-time Big A Player of the Year. And I, I was going to ask about the transition from being an outside hitter, which is, I believe, how you started your career in Nebraska, to the setter position. You kind of laid it out there a little bit. Were you intimidated at all when you realized you were going to be the setter? I mean, we, we all know that's kind of the quarterback of the volleyball game, of volleyball team. Well, I did know that that was the primary reason he was there watching me and recruiting me. And at the time, Nebraska had an amazing setter in Tisha Delaney. And so she was running the show at the at the time that I came in as a freshman and Pettit started training me for that position and preparing me. I was coming in before practices every day to do setter footwork and just all around setter training, knowing that by the time my junior year came around, I would be in charge of the offense. I would be that quarterback that you called it and I would be running the offensive show. And um, coming in, I did have experience as an attacker, and so I was put on the right side as an attacker, and um, I was actually involved in the serve-receive. So I played six rotations as the right side player. Lori also was, by the way, folks, the first Oscar volleyball player to play in the Olympics, play, played in two different Olympic games yeah. for the USA. What, remind, what was it like to play? I mean, they don't play in the Coliseum anymore. They've left that. They're over the Devaney Center. What memories do you have of the Coliseum? You know, it was such a unique setting in the fact that we had amazing fans. We still have amazing fans, but it was really tight-knit as far as um, the fans were close to the court. They really had an impact on inspiring the players and just cheering us on and just their oh, unending support for all of the players out there. It was just such a great feeling and great experience. Um, 
you know, it is a little different in the fact that sometimes to get fans, we would actually have our matches after the football team finished so that we could catch people leaving Memorial Stadium, coming past the Coliseum, and just walk in and join us for the match. Um, something else that's a lot different, some of my teammates and I, we talk about is we were responsible for setting up part of the gym as far as to add seating because we had outgrown it is we would add uh, chairs along this like one end there where you entered at the like the front doors at the front entrance we would set up chairs and um, do some things like that just to make more space you know john cook was so hesitant to leave the coliseum he loved the intimate atmosphere that you just described it's worked out pretty well i think for their move to the devaney center Take me back through some, some memorable matches that you have or some fond memories you have of your playing days here in Nebraska. Oh, wow. Now you're really challenging my memory. Um, um, hosting the regionals yeah. was a huge step, I think, for the Huskers. We actually played that at Devaney, even though we had never been playing in Devaney. We were always in the Coliseum, but just to accommodate fans, we had it um, at Devaney. Um, other matches that I recall, oh, wow. I've had a lot of matches since then with you you, Team USA. <laughs> that was in the 80s. You, you <laughs> have. How much, Lori, how much pride do you take in seeing what an unbelievable institution Husker volleyball has become. I mean, it is a state treasure now. I mean, you were at really the, not the very, very beginnings, but early right. on in the way the program was being built by Coach Pettit at that time. You have to take a sense of pride that you were one of the building blocks for this program. There was already history and tradition created when I came in with just amazing staff and amazing athletes and fan support there was already that part of it started but the way it has grown is inconceivable honestly and just i'm not i i can't say that i'm i'm surprised but just the the sheer number of fans and support that the Huskers have is just impressive for the entire state of Nebraska. Um, I would say that I am kind of part of that beginning group that really kept that traditional ball rolling, if you will. Um, but boy, it has continued to roll and roll and roll. So it's really fun to see and still be a part of. And they've sold out a football stadium. Uh, I mean, this is, un I mean, People around the country are amazed at this fan base. And there is a true love affair with this fan base and this volleyball program. And again, you were a, one, of the, one of the early one stars of this program. It's just amazing that that goes on. Well, I hope you're going to be able to make it back to Lincoln for I the I absolutely ceremony. will be there. What's your I family will be there think of this? Sure. What's that? What's your family think of all this? Well, of course, after Keith had called me, I immediately, we have a family uh, text that we have going all the time, and I immediately um, texted everyone, and they were just sent, sending their congratulations and how excited they are, and um, my husband is from Nebraska, and so he grew up just loving the Huskers, and um when I told him Tommy Frazier was being inducted, he was pretty excited about that. He's loved the Huskers in his entire life. Him and his buddies, when they were kids, they had already decided who was going to play what position for the Huskers. I mean, that didn't happen, but I just think that gives an idea to the impact that the Huskers sports, Nebraska sports, has on kids across the state. Again, final few minutes with Lori Endicott. Husker Hall of Famer will be enshrined in the Hall of Fame come this fall. Lori, do you keep in touch at all with some past from, from former teammates? Have you heard from Coach Pettit? Uh, uh, just update us on that. Well, actually, I missed a call from Pettit today, and so I need to call him back. Um, but I, I have a group text with the 86 group from 1986 when we got second in the NCAAs. Um, there's a text group that continues to go on. Um, there was a, a group chat today. Yesterday it was about Jordan Larson taking the assistant coaching position. Today it's about a former Husker that's going to play at USD, plus Stiverin's younger sister is going to play at USD. So we are constantly sharing information 
information, uh, wishing each other happy birthday, just continually in touch, which really makes it special. And it shows what kind of group and what kind of connection Huskers have together and, and to each other. Oh, it sure does. Lori, thank you so much. Thanks for going down memory row with us a little bit. I know Husker Nation will be thrilled to welcome you back with open arms when you come back in the fall for your enshrinement. It's so well-deserved. Thank and Again, you. congratulations. Thank you so much. There she is, Lori Endicott, another member of the 2023 Nebraska Athletics Hall of Fame. That was so much fun uh, chatting with her. She joined us on our Sports Highly Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. 402-413-2400. That's the phone line, text line. It works for both. We're back with more of the show next. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. In a 36, Bazelak trying to set the screen, gets hit and sacked. Brought down Ty Robinson, brings him down a sack for Ty. Hey Husker fans, tune in Friday for another encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In the 6 o'clock hour, we'll listen back to interviews with Merritt Beeson and Peyton Robb. In the 7 o'clock hour, we'll go back to conversations with Trev Alberts, Till Steinforth, and Kristen Coggin. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the trail taming 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corbin Toyota of Bellevue. Village Point Toyota of Omaha. Baxter Toyota of La Vista. Or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. 
As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Phone lines, text signs, wide open 402 413 2400. How much fun was that interview uh, with Lori and I was, but Before you went anywhere, I wanted to make sure, like, that was an awesome interview. Lori is a, I mean, a bad A. I, I'm just, she's awesome. Like, what a phenomenal woman and um, powerful and someone to look up to. And gosh, I'm so glad she's getting honored because someone like that deserves to be recognized. She, looks, the, she looks fantastic, by the, the way. the Olympic banner over her shoulder. I did See not that? believe. When you said she graduated in 88, I did not believe yeah. it. Like, looks fantastic. Ha great personality was fun entertaining yeah she's awesome so the two olympics she competed in 92 i'm pretty sure it was barcelona because that was where the dream team played with that great basketball team with magic and jordan and bird and then 96 would have been atlanta so she those were two great olympic games the u.s did not win gold with either one of those but she was the first husker volleyball player to play an olympic and team. how about coming in saying oh i'm gonna be an outside hitter oh wait oh no you're well, going to be a setter. <laughs> and then the story she tells, that, you know, she's at uh, some t regional tournament or something, and she's just hitting everything in the net, and Terry Pettit is there, comes up to her afterwards, goes, I was really impressed with you. And she goes, how? I hit everything. <laughs> he goes, I'm not looking at you as an outside hitter. I think you're a setter. Wow. And she had not thought about that. And then she came here, started as an outside hitter, and Gary got her into the setter, or Terry got her into the setter year two. That's, That's incredible. Fine. That was we're, awesome. Great we're not interview. done with our Hall of Famers. We got, we're going to try to do one a week for the next couple of weeks. We still have um, a wrestler, a w women's soccer, and a women's gymnastics. We've had some awesome interviews this week, by the way. We have. It's been a fun week. We it's have been a had fun a lot. week of shows. We have had a lot. Wilhelm Breidenbach, news about him. Remember Wilhelm? He uh, entered the transfer portal. He has found a new home. He's going to be a Husky, Washington Husky. So good for Wilhelm. Really enjoyed him. Um, I think, I think it's probably he probably needed a new move, and I think the Huskers are certainly glad getting guys like Josiah and Rink, who are really going to probably take those minutes. I'm not surprised Wilhelm went back to the West Coast. I kind of thought that he would. Um, I think that's, I mean, good for him, going to Washington. That's a that's it's a great a good program. Landing spot. Yeah, I mean, so good for him to to land that spot. But I, I know that they they really liked Wilhelm. They were really excited about him and. I don't think he fully recovered 100% from his injury, but the way that the this team is going and um, it just more athletic, more fast pace. It just uh, it kind of changed. I feel like a little bit of his fit. Um, 
the way that it changed from when he was recruited to what it is now. Maybe it's a little bit of a different style yeah. a little bit. Body type didn't fit the Big Ten real well either. Yeah. He's pretty thin up top. Where Josiah's pretty thick and will bang around and rink. I love rinks broad shoulders, and I think he's going to be perfect for the Big Ten. Well, and I also don't think, um, to me, it looked like at times that Wilhelm didn't look comfortable inside. Agreed. And he, but yet he, and I know he could shoot it well, and that's what the, we heard about him from the start is that he could shoot it well from the outside, but the percentages didn't show that Man. in two years. And so he, he didn't look like he wanted, and he would play really hard, and he'd go fight for rebounds, and he'd dive on the floor. But on the offensive end, at times, sometimes might have been a little bit of a, a liability, I guess, because he, he wasn't as comfortable inside. And especially with the depth situation they had at times last year when Derek right. Walker would go to the bench, they needed him to be that. And it just, that was not where he felt comfortable. He just didn't feel comfortable. He is more of like, he is more of a three. I as think a, so too. As opposed to a four or five. And right. I think he felt, he didn't feel comfortable in that five spot. And, and sometimes they, or where it's where he was asking they were asking him to play and that happens right that just happens you don't quite fit maybe where you need to be in that and that's that's well and it changes so drastically now it does. especially with basketball i mean like you know depending on the guys that you bring in and tailoring certain systems to what you have coming in and it, it changes and i just i think what they had originally maybe they thought he was a good fit and maybe he and the staff realized both that maybe what they were moving towards in the future, it, it wasn't as good of a fit. You know, the other night we talked about Conor McGregor knocking out the <laughs> Miami Heat mascot. That was a heck of a night for Conor McGregor in a very negative way. Later that night, um, he has been accused of sexually assaulting a woman in a bathroom at the arena. So he knocks out the mascot, which was supposed to be a little playful skit on the court, and then apparently he uh, he was uh, groping a, a woman in the bathroom at that same game that night. So what a night. My goodness. I, I've never been a huge McGregor fan. Probably a lot of our audience is. I'm not. And, boy, this solidifies my thoughts on that guy. I'm like, get him out of here. I'm definitely not a fan. Yeah, brutal. All right, 402-413-2400. Need to slip our final break in. We're back to wrap up tonight's show. And Cole is going to set the lineup for tomorrow night's Best of show. I thought you were going to say he was going to give us a preview of his dad jokes. No, nope. uh, he better, he's got to prove that <laughs> those are going to not bomb. So we'll get a preview of tomorrow night's show from Cole who's put together our best stuff for tomorrow night. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. It's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram season at Woodhouse in Blair. Shop now and save on our top models like the 2023 Jeep Compass Lease for $349 a month for 27 months. Or save now on a 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn and get 15% off MSRP. Shop all our inventory at WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com or visit our showroom off Highway 30 in Blair. This is Woodhouse with approved credit, tax, title, license, after lease for $349 per month for 27 months, 10,000 miles per year, $19.99 down, plus first payment and $299 dock fee. Good signing. Offer expires 6 30 2023 See dealer for details. And a 36. Base lacks. Trying to set the screen. Gets hit and sacked. Brought down Ty Robinson. Brings him down a sack for Ty. Hey, Esker fans. Tune in tomorrow for another encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In the 6 o'clock hour, we'll listen back to interviews with Merritt Beeson and Peyton Robb. In the 7 o'clock hour, we'll go back to conversations with Trev Alberts, Till Steinforth, and Kristen Coggin. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Shop Woodhouse Hyundai for your next vehicle. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs like the Hyundai Venue or Elantra, the Hyundai fleet has a vehicle to fit your lifestyle. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest extra easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance, America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Visit us online at WoodhouseHyundaiOfOmaha.com. F&BO Free Checking is checking that's actually free. No fees or minimums, and now no overdraft fees. It's ever so personal, with people to help every step of the way. And easy with a mobile app that allows you to deposit checks and manage your account wherever you are. So make the switch so you can do more with the great big small bank. Visit fnbo.com to learn more or stop on by. FNBO free checking. It's ever so free. Member FDIC. Sports on a hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. And you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Had a caller during the break, want to know if, if softball is going to add some seating to Bolton Stadium. I think they're talking about that. They're going to have to probably put together a plan. Huskers draw usually pretty well. Usually it's around 1,000 or so at their games, but that fills it up pretty good. They're probably going to need to bring in some extra seating. That was one of the things that I wanted to explore once the softball season was over because so obviously volleyball is number one in the nation in attendance, right? They're number one. Or, I think so. And women's basketball's top 15 yep. has been. Yep where softball ended up and so just because i think wisconsin made a deal about they had yeah. the, the three most attended games but if you want to talk about season attendance i think it'd be hard i think you'd be hard pressed to find a college that doesn't athletics three. department that has the kind of attendance that nebraska does between their three major women's sports oh i agree and so yeah. I think softball would be up there. Because softball stadiums don't seat that much right. across the country. Even like Oklahoma doesn't seat that much. Yeah. And so, um, but yes, I think absolutely. They already were having great attendance numbers. And I think they will consider that. And especially with the outpouring of what all, what's happened in the last couple of days and the interest in season tickets, I think they will absolutely uh, look to... Um, increase that however they can. And even the standing room and the berm seating, maybe sure. they can figure out something out there too yeah. as well. Doug in Norfolk wants our College World Series picks. I I'm going Virginia. In fact, I'm going to go see them play tomorrow night. They've got Florida. I've got Virginia. You got a pick? I I'm going with ORU, even though it's... Oh, okay. I got go to go with my home state school. I got to go with Oral Roberts, you They've know. They've a great story. Really and the Cinderella story. team. Yeah. I, even if they don't Win. Um, they play the first go game tomorrow. Them. They play TCU. That's the first game of the did tournament. Did you see the, the shot challenge? We were talking about that. Oh, they did that last year. And oh, like, it's huge. LSU it's was over. the favorite, and they're oh. already like running away it's with it. It's over. LSU's already won. All right, we're off tomorrow. And actually, we're off Monday, too, because it's a holiday. So we've got a couple of best ofs. What do we have on the best of tomorrow night? Cole, I know you've been hard at work on that. Yep, yep. Tomorrow night, um, we'll have Merritt Beeson, who we just talked about. Oh, team sweet. captain. Timely. Uh, coincidence. Peyton Robb kind of sharing his story after the NCAA championships. Oh, great story. Um, uh, Heinrich Harburg. Good. And then we're going to listen to Trev talk about the Big Ten conference schedules for the additions. Till Steinforth of Track and Field and Director of Football Nutrition, Kristen Coggin. Sweet. Fantastic. Can't wait to hear that tomorrow night. So best of tomorrow night. And it's a holiday. It's Juneteenth on Monday, so it's an official holiday for our company. So we will be out on Monday. So we're not. We hope to be back with you on Tuesday night for the next uh, Sports Nightly here. Uh, U.S. Open still playing. I love it. There's still live golf going on out there in Los Angeles. A couple of guys still have seven or eight holes to go. So I'm going to slip home, have a little dinner, watch some golf. Hey, you mentioned it. This is great having this late night start. Oh, yeah. Can we have more West Coast tournaments, please? Well, they, you know, NBA or in Major League Baseball, they've got night games that are going on all the time. Uh, Blaine in the chat room says he's got TCU. He likes the Horned Frogs. So you and he are button heads tomorrow. So are you TCU tomorrow afternoon? So there you go. I don't know that I like TCU's odds or Oral Roberts' odds in the shot, Jello shot deal, but that'll do it for tonight. Thanks to Cole for putting it all together. Thanks to all of you for listening. We'll talk to you hopefully next week. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. 
As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free call to 811. You want to borrow my phone, buddy? Brought to you by Nebraska 811. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers athletic 